Okay, so what Newton's second law says is that acceleration is proportional to, directly proportional to force and inversely proportional to mass. The bigger the force, the faster it accelerates. The heavier, the bigger the mass, the slower it accelerates with the same force. You know this. Intuitively, you know this. Um, this, however, is the mathematical expression of that. And it's, it's really net force is equal to mass times acceleration, but you know the sum of all the forces on the object in all directions is equal to its mass times its acceleration. And where we show that sum of F, that's the vector sum, so it's the net force. Okay, so, you know, bullet point one, duh, because there's this relationship, we can figure out any one of the three pieces. So we'll go ahead and go to the sample problem on 137. You're going to love the sample problem, and then we'll make them more complicated, of course. Okay, so what we're told is that two students are studying across from one another. Um, one student slides a book across the table. The book has a um, mass of 2.2 kilograms, and we're told that the net external force on the book is... 2.6 newtons to the right, then what is the acceleration of the book? Well, net force equals mass times acceleration. We're solving for acceleration. Net force divided by the mass. <laughs> mass of the book is 2.2 kilograms. Now, did, let me ask you this question. Did we draw a free body diagram here? No. no. We did not. What's, if, if the only thing acting on that was some force to the right, so there's no gravity, there's no normal force from the table, it's not a free body diagram. Now, that is a picture which will help you solve the problem, but it's not a free body diagram. Okay, so 2.6 newtons divided by 2.2 kilograms is equal to the acceleration, <coughs> and what's the raw? Okay, so yeah, we get for a raw answer 1.181818, 18, etc. Um, meters per second squared is our acceleration. With sig figs, we get um, 1.2. Okay, pretty, pretty straightforward, pretty easy. These are nice. Obviously, they don't stay that way. What is assigned for the book here is page 138, numbers 2, 4, and 5. I already got it up on the little board. So, page 138, 2, 4, 5. And then, we've got the worksheets. Oh yes, the worksheet. Um, and number one, yeah, number one and three, too easy. So, let me pause that. Okay, I think two, four, and five are going to be really, really easy for you. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hand out the worksheet packet. Now this has got 15 questions on it. I think it's the biggest of the additional work problems that we have in here. Um, it is odds only. So the assignment on this one is odds only, which gives anybody who was making up a test for this chapter a fantastic resource for additional problems. The evens. So just, you know, just as a note. But I'll pass this out, and then we, we can. I'll let, give you a few minutes to work on some of the 4B book ones, and then we'll work one of the 4B worksheet together. Okay, so we're going to do number one on the 4B worksheet. We are told that a racing driver survived deceleration from 173 kilometers per hour to zero um, over a distance of 0.66 meters. So... That's basically your crumple zone.
Ouch. Um, assume that his mass is 70 kilometers. What's the average force acting on him during the crash? Compare this force to Perley's weight. Remember, your weight is the force of gravity on you, so it's your mass times gravity. Okay, so let's draw Mr. Perley. There he is. And he has, we don't even, I mean, we don't have to do a free body here. So acceleration is a negative 173 kilometers per hour. Uh, oh, wait, no. Hold on. Um, VF equals zero. VI equals 173 kilometers per hour. Of course, we'll have to do what? Convert! Um, delta X is 0 0.660 meters. We don't have a time. We don't really need it. Um, we know that F net equals MA. So we're after the acceleration. And we know several things here. So again, what can we do? Well, we can... So if we... Here's, here's, here's the way to visualize this to help you. Um, if he was traveling this direction, the net force on him is going to be this way. Because he's stopping. So when you're stopping, the net force is opposing your motion. You know, so this this could be his um, 0 0.660 meters. You know, so at, at this point, he has that initial velocity, and at here, his velocity is zero. That's, that's going to be a big force. Okay, so we need to get acceleration. Well, let's, let's do a few other things here first. Um, let's see. Well, what can we do? The average is VF minus or plus VI divided by 2. That doesn't help us. We don't have time. So we need to go back to the kinematics equations. We need to find acceleration when we don't have time. So what do we have that relates displacement? Oh, there we go. VF squared, VI squared plus 2A delta X. Oh, yeah, we have to convert that first. Sorry. Yes, of course. So easier if you do that. And you can do the kilometers first. You can do the hours first. It doesn't really matter. Um, one kilometer is 10 to the third meters. And one hour is 3.6 times 10 to the third seconds. That's 1.73 times 10 to the second. That conversion, here, let me get this out of the way. His initial velocity was... 48.05, etc., meters per second. That's really fast. Well, it's really, really, really fast. Okay, so with that, we know that VF squared equals VI squared plus 2A delta X from the kinematic equations. Okay, so we'll do some rearranging to get acceleration. Vf squared minus Vi squared over 2 delta x equals A. Um, okay, so force of gravity is equal to mass times gravity. Their acceleration, we were told, was equal to what? No. 400 times the acceleration due to gravity. 400 times G. So we there now the force that the beetle must be exerting on the ground is equal to mass gravity plus whoops 
mass times 400 gravity. So at this point, algebraically, you should be able to get there. What they're doing is factoring out an M, factoring out mass, and then combining the terms for gravity and 400 gravity. That's where they get that 401. You don't have to do that. That's the way the book does it. You don't have to do it, but it simplifies matters tremendously. Mm hmm Pardon? No. So G plus G is the same as 2 times G. Yes, but this is not G plus G. G plus 10G is equal to 11G. See where, it go see where we're going? Okay. Did you use 9.81? No, I used 9.8072. Hmm. I used 9.81. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, I got what they had too using their 9.807. And then it, it, we start to get into a lot of problems where you're comparing. So, you know, do it with gravity, which is this part. Well, then do it disregarding gravity. If there was no gravity, if this beetle was, and this is all crazy, in space against the surface, but it wouldn't be, but you get the picture. You know, if, if you disregard gravity, you know, is gravity of any consequence in this? So you wouldn't the gravity slow the beetle down? What, it, what, what they're saying is, is gravity, um, is gravity a big deal here? You know, is, is, the, is the amount of force that they're using to overcome gravity comparatively large in the scheme of the overall force that they're exerting? You know what I mean? What did you get? That's it. Yeah. We're talking about a teeny little beetle. Have you seen a click beetle? Click beetles are, are basically spring loaded. They're a little tiny beetle. They're about this long. They have a sort of a, a like steely gray silver back, and their elytra, which is the part of the shell that's over their wings, um, and the covering on their head have like a hinge between them with almost like two little clips and when they get turned over on their back they basically force one of those clips down until the elasticity of the elytra forces it to rebound and they go boing up into the air and they flip themselves back upright. Pretty cool adaptation for things that need to not be stuck on their backs. You just found, well what were you looking for? Read your question. You found the force that the beetle is exerting on the ground to fly itself back up into the air. That's with gravity, because you go back to this original equation. You're you're including gravity, but gravity is negligible here. Is is really what you're coming to? The difference due to yeah yeah it's saying things out to be the same. Gravity is negligible in in the scheme of the amount of force that they're generating. The amount of force they have to generate to overcome gravity is pfft, insignificant. How do you do the net force now? How do you, yeah. what do you mean? Like the net force. You don't have to. You don't have to. No. You've got the acceleration.
Yeah. 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 Yeah.
conceptual stuff together because I'm, I'm sensing gaps oh crap so we've got Bob and I'll, I'll even draw Bob like that Bob's kind of a well, he looks like a quick beetle actually um, if Bob is just laying on the ground <laughs> Bob doesn't have a neck it's okay he's a big boy um, if he's just laying on the ground I think you can all agree that the net force on the y-axis is the force of gravity and the normal force, right? He's just laying there like a big slug. <laughs> now, if Bob is falling, let me shrink Bob laying on the ground like a big slug. If Bob was <laughs> thrown, poor Bob, and hits the ground, <laughs> no one even tries to stop him. They just throw him up and back away. <laughs> so, as Bob hits the ground, he stops. So he has some velocity as he's falling towards the earth. Boom! When he hits the ground, and the earth shakes, 
um, his velocity goes to zero, so he has an acceleration. You're given that acceleration. At the moment when he hits the ground, and let me move the ground up. At the moment when he hits the ground, he's got not only the, the force that opposes gravity acting on him, the normal force, but he also has, in addition, oops, in addition, he has got the force that is equal to his mass times the acceleration he's undergoing. Force, um, we'll call it the force of the collision, <clears throat> which is equal to his mass times his acceleration. I'm just like what? Okay. He had, well, remember, if, if Bob is laying still, then... And this, you can call this sum of forces on the y. You can call this net force. Either one. No, 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 no. We have to go here. This is conceptual. You have to understand this conceptually to solve the rest of these. At the point when he's just laying there on the field, this is zero. Right, because he's not accelerating. It's an important distinction. He's not accelerating. If he was moving at constant velocity, it would still be zero. But he's not accelerating here, so that's zero. Here, he is accelerating. His sum of forces on the y does not equal zero. Because in the moment when you're stopping, you're going from having a velocity to having no velocity. You are undergoing acceleration. That make sense? The thing that's stopping you is exerting a force on you. In this case, you know, we could call that force of the ground on Bob. The ground is exerting an extra force on Bob to stop him. To stop his motion. So what the sum of... Let's, let's do the entire sum of forces on this because I, I think we need to go there. So we, we can look at sum of forces on the x... It's zero. We don't know if there are any forces on the x and they're balanced, or if there are no forces on the x, we don't care. We're just going to ditch the, the x-axis altogether. Boom. Gone. Well, no, just, just, but uh, you should, you should write that. You should write disregard, you know, or whatever. We, we need to acknowledge that, okay, the sum of forces on the x is zero, and we're not going to deal with it. Now, if we're looking at the y... Let's, let's break this down to something I've, I've used in the past sometimes to teach this. We have all the forces that are up and all the forces that are down. Okay? To put it into simplest terms. Now, we can address the forces down pretty fast. We can, we can hammer that out in about a half a second. Name me the force that's down on Bob. Gravity. Gravity. F sub G. Okay, we got that. And we can, if we are being really conscientious, and, and perhaps I am leading you astray and we're not being as conscientious as we should, we should probably list our variables. So f of g equals mg equals, how big is Bob? 220? So fn is one of the f ups. So fn and fc Okay, hold on. Hold on. So there are two, yes, there are two forces acting on Bob in an upward direction. There's, there's the, the normal sort of inverse of gravity. There's F sub N. And there's also this force of the collision, force of the ground, whatever you want to call it. Okay? Now, what's really important here is to, to remember which, which direction these forces are going to be acting in. So if we're going to use our standard conventions, then this would be a negative number, and these would be positives. So we know that this is just going to be the negative of the force of gravity. It's just an opposition to gravity here, because the ground is flat. The force of the collision is going to be his mass times the acceleration that he is undergoing. Okay?
And what we're really trying to solve for here is the force that the ground is exerting on Bob during the collision, which is going to be all the forces upward. Okay? It's going to be all the forces upward. Does that help conceptually to think about it in terms of overcoming gravity, in terms of accelerating and having a net force that's equal to your mass? Does that help conceptually? Mm, not quite. What is, what is true is that at the moment that he stops on the ground, is he sinking through towards the center of the Earth? No. So these have to be equal to that in opposite. Wait. No, no, no. Strike that. Strike that. Strike that. We're looking for this.